Oh, I'm not gonna let this fucker die just so he has to review the movie. <laughs> I, I, I thank you, undisclosed friend, you know who you are, this is your fault, I had to sit through this blasphemous insult to my existence of a movie, I got a call after my kind, kind undisclosed friend watch the Halo Infinite video. And he said, all right, well, what's next, Mr. Rodriguez Review, sir? And I said, uh, well, undisclosed friend, sir, probably the Suicide Squad, which I've just watched. And he said, was it good or bad? And I said, well, Mr. Undisclosed Friend, sir, I absolutely loved it. It was my favorite movie of this year. It was excellent. And my kind friend said to me, Mr. Rodriguez Review, sir, who is so kind and loving, it won't be funny if you review that. Why don't you review the old Suicide Squad? And I said, well, that means I have to put myself through strenuous and seemingly unending hellish pain, my good friend, so gracious and kind. But yes, it probably would be funny. I know what I have to do, but I don't know if I have the strength to do it. So thank you once again, my undisclosed friend, so refined in the art of caring for your friends. I had to sit through this fucking movie for your entertainment. So you better fucking enjoy. I'll start with the plot of this movie, which is a pretty basic one. The government decides to accept a pitch made by Amanda Waller, some type of government special ops lady. The pitch being to create Task Force X, a group made up of villains locked up in Bell Reef Prison. They can be controlled by an explosive device implanted in their neck, and as soon as they disobey any orders... <laughs> The reason for creating them is so that the government can action missions that are top secret and if anything is found out they can blame it on the villains. Also they're expendable so it doesn't matter if they die in their missions. Pretty cool right? Yeah. 13 year old me really thought so too. Until I saw the fucking movie. And you know when 13 year old me didn't like a movie that was edgy, had action, and a scantily clad Margot Robbie. That shit must be fucking garbage. We're introduced to our characters pretty quickly, and by that, I mean for most of them, we're given a freeze frame of them, along with uh, the basic shit that they do. Because, you know, developing characters over time, making them likable, uh, showing us, not telling us, you know, classical movie techniques that are really just essential in making an actual good movie. Yeah, no. Fuck that. Nah, we'll, we'll, we'll just fucking show you some writing, which which you can't actually fucking read because it's up on the screen for, for three, maybe four nanoseconds, maybe, depending on the character. Once it's done, it's three nanoseconds, which which... Hopefully you were able to read without pausing the movie because you know that's the way you meant to watch movies without pausing it, needing to fucking pause the fucking movie to, to understand what characters do, like who they are. So if you watched it in the movies, like I did when I was 13, you didn't know what the fuck any character did. So then the fucking little title screen fucks off and that's it. Hope you're happy, hope you're happy, hope you know the character. Enjoy the movie. Enjoy these characters, which we have developed so well for you. Enjoy, dickhead. When we don't get just a, a fucking flashcard introduction, we get a small backstory. Just completely disjointed from the rest of the movie. It's just sort of inserted in there. It's just like, just fucking cut this section out and just fucking grab this one. Just fucking put it in there and just...
that type of effort where we actually, you know, get a little bit of a backstory, which is horribly inserted into the movie anyway, is only taken for two characters, Harley Quinn and Deadshot, played by Will Smith, Deadshot, and Margot Robbie, Harley Quinn. Clearly, they just went, yeah, fuck it. People maybe will care about these two. Uh, don't bother with the rest. No one gives a fuck about them. Just, just, we'll just do it for these two because these are the only ones that people maybe might care about and only really because of the actors. Look, Deadshot's origin was sort of okay. Like, up until this point of the movie, I was on board with Deadshot because Will Smith does a good job, but that's because it's Will Smith and if he's not doing a good job, it's, it's, he's probably being held against his own will by Jada Pinkett Smith. Insufferable cunt, by the way, but Harley's backstory. We get to see the Joker played by Mr. Jared the Toe. I can tell you meant that. to this handsome hunka hunka and... Oh for fuck's sake, I'm still not letting you die, can't get back up and do the fucking review! You've done something so bizarrely, just out of, like, how, how do you misinterpret the character this bad? How? It, this was never, ever meant to be a thing. You, you, no one, you've just completely ravaged his character. Like, it, it makes zero sense. The Joker as a douchebag gangster. What the fuck? What the fuck? Also, him being in this movie does not change a single plot point. Not one bit. You could cut out all of his scenes and nothing would change. That's not a joke. That's on being serious. If you removed every single scene which contained him in it, the story would be the same. He ch I'm, I'm dead serious. I'm dead serious. I don't recommend watching this movie, but if you want to, to, to see the proof for what I'm saying, I am dead fucking serious. He, he nothing changes because of the Joker. What? P you realize people are paid to write this shit. People are paid money to write a character that doesn't contribute to the fucking story that they're in. At all. Jared the Toad also does a horrible job. Like, this shit is just fucking horrendous. First of all, look at this motherfucker. That part I know is, is, is not his choice. But fuck me. Thank you for letting me know that he's fucking damaged by tattooing it on his head. Don't don't communicate it through good writing. Just, just put it on his fucking head. Just. There you go. That's all the cat. That's that's. That's all you need to know. That's. That's the characterization. I'm damaged. You can see. We're not going to show you in the movie like, you know, every other movie would do. We're just going to tattoo it across his head so that you all know that he's damaged. But the acting, the way that he does the Joker. Oh my God. Jared the Toe. Fuck off. No one wants to see this shit again. Every second that you are Joker is just fucking agony to watch. Pain. In this movie, they say... Who would stop Superman if he was a bad guy? And the government has decided that the most capable people to do that is the Joker's girlfriend with a baseball bat, an alcoholic Australian with boomerangs, 
a guy that is good with guns, a man who looks like a crocodile, a man who has fire powers but doesn't want to use them, and a witch. The only one that would stand an inkling of a chance against Superman is the witch, and she breaks free. The witch escapes and now it's the job of the rest of the Suicide Squad to stop her. Remember our super capable Suicide Squad without the witch? You know, the couple crazy people with guns and sticks? Mmm, they're gonna stop the witch from destroying the planet. Great writing, guys. Excellent stuff. Some people may say, oh, well, it's a movie and it's not meant to be realistic. Well, obviously fucking not, cunt. We're talking about a movie with a witch in it. What is important is that everything is believable within the confines of the story's universe that the writers have set out. In this universe, it is not believable that these people could defeat this. In Star Wars, it is not believable that a Jedi with zero training can defeat a fully trained Jedi who turned to the dark side the first time that she picks up a fucking lightsaber. And any of you that know what I'm talking about about Star Wars and want to refute that point, don't. I am right. Shut the fuck up. I've gone off topic, but you understand what I mean. Just because a movie is not realistic doesn't mean it can't obey the rules that it has set out in its own universe. So the witch breaks free, and now the Suicide Squad has to stop her. The action in this movie is terrible. It's not shaky, can uh, actually, sorry, one scene was okay. The one where Deadshot hops up on the car and just starts mowing down everything is actually pretty cool. Other than that, the rest is fucking shit. It's not one of those movies where it's just shaky cam, where the person just fucking, they're just recording the fucking action and they're just, just, woo, woo. Can you tell what's going on? Are you having fun? Woo. It's not one of those. It's just one where there's ridiculously shitty lighting in all the action scenes so they can easily cover up any shitty choreography and you don't really know what's going on. It's fucking pathetic. I was gonna make a joke about how bad the lighting is in the action scenes, but the, the, the lighting coming off my computer is actually providing better lighting than what's in the action scenes in this movie. It's more like having, having an epileptic, a fucking fit, like, This is actually still better than what the movie does. This is still more, you can still tell too much what's going on here. The movie, you can't tell. This is, this is better. This is, the, the movie's action scenes have worse lighting than this. The characters are all shit, except for Deadshot and Amanda Waller. And it's not because of the writing or that they've been characterized well. It's only because of the actors. Viola Davis does a great job of playing this inhumane bitch that'll do anything for the sake of the mission. And I am very glad she got a chance to show that again in an actual good movie. And Will Smith is Will Smith, so I am legally obligated to like him. Other than that, utter shit. Worst one is Slipknot, which doesn't even get one of those shitty freeze frames. They just explain his character in one sentence when he's rocking up to the meat thing where the team is meeting each other. They're like, yeah, this, this fucker, he can climb anything. Like, what the fuck? You fucking idiots. I'm, like, again, I'm serious. It's not a joke. One line is used to explain his character. It goes, it, like, it's something like this. This is Slipknot. The man who can climb anything. You were expecting more? You wanted to know more about this character? <laughs> Fuck you, idiot. He's only here so he can die straight away to show us the head exploding stuff. And it's it's just dumb. It's clear that they were trying to make it look like anyone could anyone that disobeys the orders can get their head blown up straight away. 
it just does a terrible job of that and it's something that the new Suicide Squad does way, way, way better than this. Straight away, the new Suicide Squad makes you feel unsafe and like anyone could die at any moment. That just any of the villains that have been introduced, they, just, they could be killed unceremoniously. Way better than this. This is just so clear that they're not going to do it with anyone else because I've actually spent time trying to characterize them and they killed the only one that has the, the absolute minimal characterization. It was so stupid. It's, it's so clear that they just went, oh yeah, that one, just pick a villain that's fucking useless that would never be good here and just kill him off at the start to make it look like we're not afraid to kill people. Captain Boomerang is okay, I guess. He has some funny moments, but I still didn't care about him. And if you've watched the movie, neither do you. Don't lie to yourself. Just because you're Australian, he's Australian. You don't care, okay? The Suicide Squad 2021 does a better job of characterizing him in the first five minutes of the movie than this movie does in the whole two hour runtime. El Diablo is shit as well. Poor attempts to characterize him, or Oh no, my family died because of me, Cholo Mexican. This Katana bitch who also receives absolutely no characterization, just throwaway lines being like, oh, her husband died to this sword and now it traps the souls of her victims in the sword. Like, am I supposed to give a fuck because you, mate, you wrote two throwaway lines about her? I'm supposed to care about her character now. Please just shut the fuck up. Harley Quinn is shit too. Like, she's just fucking annoying. I have no idea what they were going for here. Like, um... Uh... Uh... Mmm. Well... It's, it's not all bad. The soundtrack of this movie alone is great, but that's because they decided to put older 70s songs all over the place with zero thought that they definitely used most of the budget on. Like, Bohemian Rhapsody is here, Sympathy for the Devil, when Amanda Waller is introduced, like, oh, you get it guys? She's the fucking devil, that's why it's playing. Wow, wow, great usage guys. Good stuff. She's the devil, I get it. Good job. And also House of the Rising Sun when the prison is being introduced. Once again, guys, do you get it? Do I need to shove it in your face anymore? The song is about a prison and it's being played when the prison is introduced. We are so smart, guys. Look at us. We are so good at fucking soundtrack choice. Look, the movie's just plain fucking horrendous, okay? And it's not, it's not like one of those movies where it's so bad that it's good, like Fast and Furious 9, it's just, this one's just plain pa painful. Like sitting through this movie again to review it had me on fucking life support. You are my guests to this handsome hunker hunker. You. And Jared the Toe, fuck off with your bullshit about feeling not represented properly and how it was offensive that Joaquin Phoenix came in and slapped your ass with Joker. All right, you fucking child, you did badly. Accept it and move on, Mr. Jared the Toe. I hope you enjoyed this video, guys. I may still review the Suicide Squad, uh, as in the one that just released by James Gunn. If you haven't watched it, you should absolutely do so. It's uh, worth the price of HBO for uh, one month or whatever it is, just to have a watch of it. Um, genuinely great. Uh, I may go more in depth about Fuck it. Fuck off, you idiot. No one wants to actually hear your fucking opinion, you dumb cunt. Fuck off, Brucey, you dumb cunt. Fuck off, cunt. Everyone wants to hear you fucking scream and do fucking Brucey, shit. Brucey, fuck off back idiot. to the pokies where you come from, you fucking idiot. Fuck off, you dirty wog cunt. Brucey, you don't shut the fuck up now. I'm gonna put you no, in a fucking ground cunt. Fuck you. Yeah, good. Fuck you, you fucking idiot cunt. Fucking asshole. Thanks once again for watching, um, leave a like if you enjoyed, a dislike if you didn't. Consider subscribing and uh, I look forward to seeing you next time. Goodbye.
Yeah, good cocky. Oh, yes, fuck you, you 